I'm doing a series of videos on these five classic games in game theory and how to think about them. So in this video, I just want to um, explain to you why you would want to learn these five games really, really well. And the basic reason is that once you learn the structure of these games, you can actually start to look for them in everyday interactions and in strategic relationships with different countries and different celebrities in the news. Like, you will see these games all over the place in real life once you train your brain to see what are the patterns. And when I first learned these games as an undergraduate student, I just thought these were kind of fun scenarios that sort of matched with this, uh, the, the strategic games I was learning about in class. I didn't realize that these are just like representatives of a whole class of real games between people. But that's the way to think about them. And the five games are The Prisoner's Dilemma, Battle of the Sexes, Game of Chicken, the stag hunt game, which is oftentimes referred to as the assurance game, and zero-sum games. Like, you should be able to write down all of these games without looking at an example. You should just know how they're structured, and if you can do that, you will be way better at strategic thinking. Now, the other reason to learn these games really deeply is because they help you to think in ways that may seem contradictory at first, but actually make a lot of sense in strategic interactions. So um, the, the biggest one of these, I think, is to realize that competition and cooperation are not opposites. As a matter of fact, in a couple of these games, you have competition and cooperation at play in the same scenario. And if that seems like that's not even possible, if it seems to you like you're either cooperating or you're competing, but not both at the same time, your interpretation of what's going on in most scenarios is going to be flawed. And in particular, if you're interested in this, the battle of the sexes and the game of chicken, just go look those games up and stare at them until you can figure out why competition and cooperation is at play in both of these games at the same time in a very obvious way. These games will also help you figure out when people who should be cooperating are not cooperating, what's going on? Because a lot of this is about cooperation, and if you can figure out which of these classes of games this particular scenario fits into, you're way more likely to rejigger the incentives in a way that won't mess things up. Because economists, of course, are trying to rejigger incentives. That's our whole thing we're hired to do. And if you understand how incentives are actually sometimes seemingly complex until you can really figure out, oh wait, if you can fit the scenario into one of these five scenarios, it's a lot easier to solve that problem. And one more analogy I'll use here is the zoo analogy. And I'm getting this from Danella Meadows' book, Thinking in Systems, which I'm obsessed with, I have a whole series on. But what she says is it's really helpful when you're studying systems to recognize that there's different classes of systems. And those classes are like animals in a zoo, where if you learn, okay, there's some properties of a lion, and if you understand what lions are in general, um, that will help you understand this particular lion, even if this particular lion will have their own unique quirks and their own unique personalities. You know they're not going to be that close to the swans or that close to the monkeys because they're a lion. And I think the same thing is true in interactions where people are trying to cooperate or where managers are trying to get people to cooperate, where you, you need to classify the situation. Is this a lion situation or is this a monkey situation or a swan situation? And once you've classified it, there will be some nuances and quirks uh, that have to do with the individual personalities involved. But you'll kind of be able to get a handle on how are the incentives structured if you know these five games. So that's my selling point that you, if you're learning game theory, should really become very familiar with these games.